This video will cover three things that you need to know about subject two that no one else is telling you. Hey, welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're true. I'm Dara, real estate investor, entrepreneur, and consultant out of Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm gonna jump right into this video because it's very important that I get the word out about this topic here. So, before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also be aware that I am not a tax attorney, tax professional, accountant, CPA, or anything or anyone that claims to be. I am just Dara, a real estate investor, entrepreneur, and consultant out of Atlanta, Georgia. All right, but yeah, so this is me so talking from experience and I just wanna share because subject two is one of those subjects i'm saying it's one of those topics that um a lot of investors when they're new hear about it and they're like oh my gosh great let's do it because it's no money down it's sexy it's cool and then a lot of homeowners hear about it and think scam so i'm here to tell you three things you need to know about subject two whether you're a homeowner or an investor interested in pursuing this strategy First thing is that it's not a scam. It's not a scam. It's a real actual way to sell a property or to acquire a property or get rid of a property. So yes, you can sell a property subject to the existing financing. I'm in Georgia. That's the only state I'm gonna speak of. But I think a little birdie told me that a lot of the 50 states in the United States of America, you can do the strategy too. But speaking only from what I know, what I've done, in Georgia subject to is an actual legitimate way to acquire property now are there people who are scammers out there of course are there people who take advantage of others or homeowners who are in vulnerable situations such as pre foreclosure does America start with an a right but just so everybody knows subject to is not a scam in its own right it is a very legal way to acquire property again i'm not an attorney don't claim to be one and you should seek the advice of a legal counsel now that that's out the way it's not a scam that was rule number tip number one secret number one it's not a scam it can actually be done let's get into the real nitty-gritty of this video so first things first something that nobody ever talks about when it comes to subject two is insurance now i got a question on one of my videos about subject two and the specific deal that I acquired this way. And I was like, wait, that's a great question. And you don't have the answer because nobody talks about it. So here I am talking about it. Insurance, who, what, when, where, why, and how. So as you may know, a mortgage is your principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So P-I-T-I, P-I-T-I. So this last I is your insurance. So if you're taking over somebody's mortgage, you're taking over their mortgage payments, you're paying their PITI, you're also paying insurance. So the question I got was, when you take over subject two, do you have to get your own insurance policy? And that's a great question, my friend, because I thought the same thing. I actually went out to some insurance agents that I know and I'm like, hey, can you insure this property for me? No need because you're already paying it. So instead of getting your own insurance policy, what you should do is have the mortgage holder, the previous homeowner, add you onto their insurance policy as an additional insured. When it comes to subject two, a lot of times you get a lot of backlash, a lot of negativity, and it's probably from hearsay or maybe horror stories of experiences that have gone wrong. And the first objection that I think most people hear besides being a scam when it comes to subject two is oh no you're gonna get caught with the due on sale clause all right now i'm no expert in subject twos won't claim to be but i do know investors whose sole business model is on subject two so they've acquired over 50 properties this way and out of their 50 zero have been called due on sale a lot of people lose sleep at night about this three word phrase and the truth of the matter is is very unlikely to be called now, I'm not gonna say what causes it or what triggers it. You can definitely do your own research on that. But as far as the payments being made to the bank, they really just want their payments on time. That's all. <laughs> so make sure you get those payments into them on time. It doesn't matter if it's coming from John Doe, the mor mortgage holder, or my pretty LLC, you know? So 
just make sure you pay on time and you really don't have to worry about the due on sale issue at all. So this leads me to my next tip being, it doesn't matter what account is making those payments as long as those payments are being made. So the bank isn't gonna say, hmm, John Doe used to pay me every single month. Now my pretty LLC is paying me. Well, who's my pretty LLC? Let me go investigate and make sure they don't keep paying me on time. I mean, what? I, I don't. I don't really know. But it doesn't matter who the money's coming from as long as it's paid in full. If you pay more, that's better. And on time. Period. The last and final tip that I want to share with you guys that nobody else talks about when it comes to subject two is good old tax season. Now, again, I made that disclaimer in the beginning, and I personally don't even know much about taxes myself, but this one thing you're going to need to know. So, like I mentioned, when you're paying a mortgage, you're paying P-I-T-I. That last I was insurance, that first I is interest. And if you don't know, when you pay interest on a mortgage, you can deduct that on your taxes. So, when tax season rolls around, you want to make sure that you have an agreement, along with telling your mortgage holder, the previous seller, like, hey, could you add me to your insurance policy as an additional insured? You want to have an agreement with them that, hey, since I'm making these payments, which includes the interest, will you allow me to write that off on my taxes? Will you allow me to add that on my taxes? Because you ain't getting the benefits of what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. Just trying to break it down. Mano y mano so everybody can understand. But yeah, so with insurance, you want to have it arranged with the previous homeowner, the current mortgage holder, that you will be the one to write off and deduct that interest that's being paid. So there it is, guys. Now, this is going to be the one rare video where I do not encourage you to ask me questions in the comments because, like I said, I'm in no way, shape, or form a professional, a tax professional, or an expert. So if you have any further questions or need clarification, that's when you call your tax expert, call your real estate attorney, call your tax attorney, call your CPA, your accountant, but don't call Dara. But I hope these three tips I shared with you help. Um, if so, give me a thumbs up share this video and subscribe to my channel wait before you go read down below in the description box if you have any other questions pertaining to real estate wholesaling getting started or getting to that first deal go ahead and schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me if you like this shirt that i'm wearing let me know and i might mass reduce them for all the pretty little flippers out there so again thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one